Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video, we're going to work really hard on understanding the derivative of a function at a specific point. So in calculus, uh, this word is going to show up a lot, the derivative of a function. And it's really important that you get a good understanding as to what it means to be the derivative of a function, say at a point. So let's first go over some different ways that you can think of what a derivative is. Uh, the big idea behind a derivative is that it gives us information on how a function is changing with respect to a variable. Now, usually uh, when you first learn a derivative, this will be with respect to x usually. And so you want to know, you know, where is your function increasing? Where is it decreasing? Maybe where is it staying the same? Now, an important tool for figuring out how it is changing is actually computing the slope of a tangent line at that given point. And to think of why that would actually work, uh, well, notice how if we're looking at the slope of a tangent line, we want to know the rise over run. So what is the change in the y value over the change in the x value? How is that function changing? And of course, there's an algebraic way that we go through computing the derivative of the function, and it uses this formula down here at the bottom. So this part literally says uh, I'm taking the derivative of f at a point x sub 0. So that's why I put the little tick mark there. That means the derivative of the function. In order to find that, you'll take the limit of f of x sub 0 plus h minus f of x sub 0 all over h. Now, that formula is not intuitive, and it, it doesn't, you know, if you're just looking at it, it's hard to tell that that really does give you the slope of a tangent line or actually gives you information on how the function is changing. So we're going to spend a little bit of time showing you uh, how this formula gives us that information. And then near the very end, we'll look at, say, you know, the information that tangent line gives us and places where the derivative does not exist. Okay, so watch for that near the end. All right, so let's see what we can do uh, with this definition of a derivative. So imagine having some, you know, generic function, maybe something like this, and it could be increasing, decreasing, you know, just doing all kinds of things. And what I'm really curious is, you know, what is happening at this point x sub 0? How is it changing? What is the tangent line at that specific point? Well, the only problem with finding that tangent line directly is, you know, if I want to figure out something like the slope, I need two points to do it. So what we do is we end up picking a second point a little bit further down. And we do this at a distance of h away. So let's call the second point x sub 0 plus h. And if you want, you can mark the corresponding points on the actual graph. So there is a point right here. That's when we plug it into the function. And we'll have a point, say, a little bit further down here. So let's mark out their y values. OK, so this one way up here, that's what happens when I put uh, x sub 0 in. And this one would be f of x sub 0 plus h. OK. So in order to compute the uh, secant line through these two points, we need to figure out the rise over run. So let me draw in our secant line. And then we'll actually just write down the equation for the slope and eventually turn it into our formula for the derivative. OK. So to figure out slope, we're looking in the change in our y values all over the change in our x values. So to grab our change in our y values, we would sub sub subtract the y uh, values from each other. So imagine taking, say, the second point minus the first one. So f of x sub 0 plus h minus the first one. And then we'll divide that by the x values. So this x value minus that x value. So this right here would give me the slope of the green line. And it's kind of close to the actual line I'm looking for. Remember that we're still actually interested in uh, the tangent line up here. But you know what? The green line is pretty close. Well, we can do a little bit of simplifying with this guy. Maybe cancel out some x sub zeros. And you can see that we get uh, this formula right here, f of x sub 0 plus h minus f of x sub 0 all over h. OK. 
Now, if I wanna use this line to actually give me the slope of my tangent line, I need to get these points closer and closer and closer together until they're essentially just a single point. Well, the way we've made these two points is they are a distance of h away. So to really start squeezing them closer and closer together and get my tangent line, we just add a small little piece to our formula so far. We say, let's see what happens when h goes to zero. All right, so imagining those points getting closer and closer and closer together, and that will build our tangent line. So right about there. Well, that's what, you know, exactly what we're trying to do with this formula is this will tell us the slope of the tangent line at that specific point. We just have to compute a limit. So let's see how that tangent line really gives us information about our function. So here's another generic function. You can see that sometimes it's going up, sometimes it's going down. I've marked out one, two, three, four specific spots on that function. And in this first one, you can visually see that tangent line is increasing, which corresponds to what the function is doing. It's going up. And the steeper this line is, the more my function is actually increasing. Here, when we look at the tangent line, it's going down, so it would have a negative slope. And sure enough, that corresponds to my function, which is decreasing, it's going down. Now, these tangent lines are also really good at finding places where your function really isn't going up or down, you know, staying the same value. And notice how there, the slope is actually zero. I got one more point uh, just to demonstrate that actually the value of the slope does make a difference on how much it increases. So our first point has a steeper slope than this one. And sure enough, that's because the function is increasing more over here than it actually is over here. So as you can see, the, the derivative gives us information about what our function is doing, how much it is changing. And we're getting that information from the slope of the tangent line. And to compute the slope of that tangent line, uh, we look at the limit of the secant lines as they get really close to that point. Okay, so that's a lot of information about the derivative. Uh, but unfortunately, there are a few spots where the derivative does not exist. Let's briefly look at some places where, you know what, you're not going to get a derivative. Since we're interested in about uh, specific points on the function and what's happening there, you can't have a derivative where the function is simply not there or where it's not continuous. So imagine your holes or your breaks or your gaps. If you have anything like that in your function, you can't build a tangent line there. So derivative doesn't exist. Now, just because your function is continuous doesn't mean that your derivative will always exist there either. In fact, the derivative does not exist at corners or cusps. So that'd be like this little corner or that little cusp down there. The derivative will not exist at those little points. Now, why not? What's going on? How come? Well, imagine what's happening to, say, the uh, uh, tangent line as you're getting really close to that point, but you're doing it on the right side. So, you know, if you're coming in on the right, it looks like it has a negative slope. You know, the line is decreasing. But as you're coming in from the other way, and getting close to that point, now you actually have a positive slope and it shows that it's increasing. So, you know, both those tangent lines on either side of the point don't agree. One's negative, one's positive. And if I'm right there at the point, well then what tangent line should I choose? Should I be the decreasing, increasing one? I don't know. So we're gonna say it doesn't exist there. And for that same reason on the cusp, you know, even though these are, are a little bit more rounded, the tangent lines as they come in here simply do not agree. They end up going, you know, like straight up and down. All right, and that's a good segue into the last place where the derivative does not exist, vertical tangents. In these ones, you know, the, the, the function itself is continuous. There is no break or gap. There's no corner that's happening here. But what is happening is the slope of that tangent line wants to go towards infinity. And you know, how do I really express how the function is increasing by attaching it to a number like infinity? So our function does not have a derivative at vertical tangents where it essentially wants to go straight up and down, okay? So hopefully that gives you a little bit more information about a derivative. Uh, check out my other videos on how we actually go through that difference quotient and compute that limit uh, so that we can actually get a value for our derivative. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.